Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I built this rabbit hutch relatively easily and inexpensively using a lot of recycled and repurposed materials. I built several variations of this same basic design over the years. This particular one is 4 feet wide and 8 feet long and it has four individual compartments, each of which consists of a larger open area and a smaller nest box area which is mostly enclosed to protect from the weather. Since I did use a lot of repurposed materials for this project, a lot of my design choices, if you will, were heavily influenced by just what resources I had available to me. Um, and because of that, I'm not going to go into a lot of super great detail in this video regarding um, little nitpicky things like measurements because I don't think they are that crucial and I don't think that they would necessarily be applicable or helpful to everybody watching this since they may have different uh, resources available to them than I did. Um, so what I'm going to try to do with this video is just do a pretty basic overview of what I did and how I did it and I'm going to only go into little details about measurements and things like that when I really think it'll be helpful. So to begin, I needed some 2x4s to work with and we had these that were laminated together because they had previously been used as a post. So I spent some time uh, pulling those apart and removing all of the old nails. Once I had some 2x4s to work with, I began by assembling a 4 foot by 8 foot rectangle to be the frame for the floor of the hutch. I cut three additional 2x4s the correct length to fit just inside the frame. I placed one in the center and the other two about 18 inches in from each end. 
this measurement was determined by the length of the carpenter cloth I was using, as you'll see in a few minutes. I placed all of these laying flat instead of up on their edge because I was more concerned about having additional surface area to attach and support the wire than I was about weight. When building the frame, I did use some screws which were new. However, I also took some time to straighten out the nails that I had pulled out of the laminated 2x4s earlier, and I reused as many of those as I could. Also, I forgot to film this part, but I did add two more short pieces between the flat 2x4s uh, to provide support and an attachment point for the wire down the middle of the hutch since I had to use the wire in two pieces. The wire that I used for the floor and the front of the hutch is one of the few things that I did go out and purchase specifically for this project. It's a half inch by half inch carpenter cloth. This particular roll was two feet by 10 feet, which I cut in half to have two two by five pieces to go down each side. And that's what uh, determined the size of the open part and the nest box part of each compartment because I then had five feet of wire that I had to center on this eight foot cage, which means each compartment got two and a half feet of open area and that left about a foot and a half that would have to be solid floor. So that was the nest box area. After wrestling the wire into place, I used a staple gun to tack it down temporarily. However, the staples are not strong enough to hold it by themselves, so I will be adding strips of wood later to hold it down more securely.
To get some plywood for the solid part of the floor, I started pulling apart these shelves that we removed from the garage when we first moved in. Since the plywood was wider than I needed for the end pieces, I started by cutting off some narrow strips that I could use to secure the carpenter cloth. Once it was trimmed down to the correct width, I marked and cut it in half to create the two solid floor pieces. Once I had them in place, I secured them using screws and nails, making sure that the ones along the inside edge would go through the carpenter cloth to hold it in place. Once the end pieces were in place, I started adding the narrow strips to help secure the wire.
When it was time for the legs, I cut 2 by 4s to the correct length, and then I also cut some short blocks, which I fastened to each of the legs so that the top of the block was where the bottom of the frame needed to be. Having the hutch up off the ground can be really convenient, but when you're trying to decide how tall to make it, don't forget to take your own height into consideration. It should be low enough that you can easily reach over the edge, and it should be shallow enough that you can easily reach the bottom of the cage for cleaning to retrieve voles and to handle the rabbits themselves. To achieve this, I would recommend making the front edge of your cage at least a few inches lower than the height of your underarm and the depth of the cage itself no longer than the length of your arm, although this would also be affected by how wide your cage is from front to back. In my particular case, I knew I wanted the top of the cage to be about 43 inches high, so that's what I cut the legs to, um, also factoring in my arm length and the uh, carpenter cloth I wanted to use on the front of it. I knew that I wanted the cage itself to be about 16 inches deep, so adding in the width of the 2x4 on the frame, I put the top of the block about uh, 20 inches down from the top of each leg. Then I started a screw in each leg on the opposite side and just above the block so that when I went to set it up, as you can see, uh, the frame just rested against the blocks and allowed me to uh, finish putting that screw in on each side and it just made it a lot easier to hold everything in place and get it started. At this point, um, once I got all of the legs under it and thoroughly fastened, I, you could remove the blocks, um, but I just chose to leave them in place to add a little bit of extra support. As you can see, I checked my diagonals to make sure everything was square before I put in the rest of the screws. Um, and then fortunately, right about then, Zach came home from work and was able to help me uh, lift up and hold the other side while I got those legs started, which is good because uh, I probably could have done it by myself, but it was pretty heavy. At this point, it was starting to get dark, and we were forecast to get some rain for the next couple of days, so we decided to go ahead and move it into the shop so that I could continue to work on it where it was dry. This sheet of plywood that I'm cutting is something that was left here by the guy who lived here before. Um, it was a full 4x8 sheet, it appeared to be brand new, other than um, it did have a little bit of water damage on one end where it was sitting up on the floor up against the wall um, so it was it isn't what I would call a repurposed material but it also isn't something that I went out and bought specifically for this project so what I was making is the 
center divider that would run down the center of the hatch lengthwise to divide one side from the other. Um, and I did want it to be peaked a little bit with a few inches of slope in the roof, so I cut it 20 inches wide. With that done, I needed a way to hold it upright and also a way to support the ridge pole eventually, so I cut some 2x4 pieces of the same length and toenailed them down to the frame just off to the side of the center, and then I was able to stand the plywood up against them and attach it, and I put another 2x on the other side to sandwich it and hold it up securely. I also forgot to film this, but as you can see, before I put the plywood up there, I cut a notch halfway down the piece at the center of it, so in this case it was 10 inches long, and the width was the thickness of the plywood I was using. Later that week, my mom was able to come up and help me for a few hours one afternoon. So here we are getting ready to cut out the divider to go the other direction. Um, it of course had to be peaked, so I had to mark out the angles for that. And I also wanted to make little doors that I could either leave closed or open to be able to combine the compartments on either side so I could um, have a bigger area if I wanted to, you know, if I have a doe that has older kids and need the extra space, whatever. So I marked out and cut the openings for those little doors and we also cut out uh, another notch in the middle to correspond with the one in the other piece. And here it is all cut out, and as you can see, those notches that we cut in the middle of each piece are going to fit together to hold this piece up without needing any fasteners to do so. Once the dividers were in place, we went ahead and added a 2x4 at the peak and one on each of the lower edges. Um, I forgot to film this part, but we did also have to add a small notch at each of the top corners of the peach divider uh, to allow the 2x4s to fit in there.
as I'm editing this, I feel the need to point out that this is just a video about how I built a rabbit hutch. It is in no way a tutorial in best power tool safety practices, and you probably shouldn't do any of the things that we're doing. We just happen to have a lot of experience in how to do sketchy stuff without permanently maiming ourselves, but the outlaw life isn't for everyone. Anyway, the next thing we did was to work on the little doors between the compartments that I mentioned earlier. Um, so to make the doors themselves, I cut a piece of plywood slightly bigger than the opening we had cut in the divider. And then we also cut some narrow strips and some slightly wider strips. The narrower ones went right on the divider and they were slightly thicker than the door itself. And then the slightly wider ones went over it. Those to form a little track for the door to slide up and down in. All of the plywood pieces that I used for the doors and tracks were just some odds and ends pieces that were left here by the guy who lived here before. As you may be able to tell, when we fasten these lower 2x4s into place, I left them sticking up above the legs just slightly. This was intentional so that when we added the plywood later for the roof, that the bottom edge of it would rest evenly all the way across that 2x4 instead of hitting the legs first and only resting on the corners. After that, we moved on to the wire for the front of the cages. For this part, I bought a 3 foot by 5 foot roll, which we cut in half lengthwise, giving us an 18 inch by 5 foot piece for each side. Once again, I just tacked it in place with a staple gun, and we'll come back to this a little bit later. This is the remaining portion of that full sheet of plywood, and here I'm cutting part of it into pieces to use for the solid wall portion of the long side of the cage. I also cut a short piece of 2 by to fit inside on the back side of this plywood which helped to secure the wire on that end and it will also give me something to fasten to later when it's time to add the divider for the nest box. I had this kind of funny shaped piece left over from cutting out the peak divider and since it was already at the right angle I decided to go ahead and cut it in half so that I could use it for two of the nest box dividers. I also had to notch these pieces to fit around that top 2x4. I already had the 2x4s to pass into on the outside wall, but I needed something on the inside wall, so I cut these strips, put one on each side of the center divider, and screwed through all three layers to fasten them together. Those angled pieces were great to form the top part of the divider, but I still needed something to close off most of that opening that was left on the bottom, so I took that remaining piece of plywood and used some of it to do that part. Since I was using two pieces of plywood, I needed a way to tack them together there in the middle, so I just cut a little short piece of wood and used it to scab them together on the back side. As you can see, that worked out really well, but that was only enough to take care of two of the four compartments. So to get some plywood for the other two, I went out and tore apart another one of the shelves that we had taken out of the garage.
Once the dividers were all taken care of, it was time to move on to the end walls, so I started by cutting some 2 bys to run from the peak down to the lower edges. As you can see, I left the tops of those down just a little bit, and again, that was intentional so that later when I go to put the plywood on for the lid, the top of it will be flush with the top of the ridge pole. If I were going to do this again, something that I might do a little bit differently would be to notch the center divider around the ridge pole a little bit uh, so that the lid would rest on it in the middle too. As it is, it's only going to rest on the ends and the front edge, uh, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. This piece I'm putting on here is just temporary to help hold the siding boards in place and for the siding boards uh, what I used again was some odds and end pieces that were left here by the guy who lived here before. I think they were um, like leftover end pieces from baseboards and they were all uh, only two to three feet long which worked out great for what I was doing here uh, especially since I was kind of running low on big pieces of plywood that I could use for something like this, so that worked out pretty good.
with that done, it was time to move it back outside and work on better securing the carpenter wire on the front of the cage. And for that, what I used was some odds and ends pieces of trim, uh, again, which were left here by the person who lived here before. Um, and again, you know, it was just short two, three foot pieces that were cut off the ends. And that was a great place to use up some little stuff like that. Before moving on to the roof, I wanted to finish the little door between the compartments by adding a latch that would hold it either securely closed or open. To do that, I first found a bolt that was slightly bigger around than my finger, with a shank slightly longer than the combined thickness of the divider and the door. Then I found a washer to fit it, and a compression spring that was slightly smaller than the head of the bolt, and about the same length. Next, I took a block of wood, countersunk to the diameter and thickness of the washer, and then continued drilling the hole at a diameter slightly larger than the head of the bolt to a depth slightly under the combined length of the spring and the head of the bolt. After that, I drilled a hole slightly larger than the shank of the bolt in the divider just above the closed door. Then I drilled another hole to match it near the bottom of the door. And then I started a screw on either side of the hole in the divider. To put it all together, I took the block of wood, inserted the spring, followed by the bolt and washer, put the bolt through the hole in the divider, and secured it with screws. So now what we have is just a little spring loaded bolt and to open it all I have to do is push it in and slide the door up and it will snap into place and hold it securely open and then to close it again we just do the opposite. For the roof I didn't want anything too heavy so I decided to use the plywood off this pallet which was a whole sheet and was only about a quarter of an inch thick. Since it was pretty thin, after cutting it in half, I used a little bit wider piece of trim to reinforce it on what would be the top side, and that was to make it a little bit stiffer, and also to give me more material to fasten the hinges into. Once I had it in place, I added the hinges, one on each end, and then later I also added a third one in the middle. The hinges are the only other thing that I went out and bought specifically for this project. If 
Eventually I want to find something better to cover the roof with, but for now I'm just using this piece of plastic tarp which came off a stack of lumber. It isn't quite wide enough to cover the whole roof, but it's close enough to work temporarily. At this point there were still a few things that I needed to do on it, but it was finished enough to be functional and I really wanted to get the rabbits moved into it this night, so I went ahead and got some hay to put in the nest boxes for bedding, and I got some food and water ready for them. Obviously it was getting too dark to be able to film well, but I did get them all moved in and here they are checking out their new homes. They've been in it for about a month now and so far it's working out really well, but I have added a couple other small things during that time. Because the roof is so lightweight, I did have some issues with it blowing open. Um, at first I was just using these big rocks to hold it closed and most of the time that was working, but when the wind was strong enough, sometimes that wasn't enough. Like on uh, when we had that cold snap come through right before Christmas. We had some really nasty winds that night and I had a rock on it, but it blew it open hard enough to blow it all the way from the door on that far side to over here in the yard, which is about 30 feet away, and it actually broke the rock. That little piece on the left broke off and it rolled down the hill about another five feet. Uh, so that was pretty bad. That night I actually just screwed the doors shut um, until morning, but obviously that isn't a long-term solution. So I made these little latches which just consists of a bolt in the lid that sticks up and a little piece of chain that I can set over it to hold it closed. I also wanted a way to be able to hold the doors open so that I could have both hands free. So I started by adding this block of wood on one side of the divider to give me more material to pass it into and then on the opposite side. I added a stick with just one screw in the bottom end to allow it to pivot, so then all I would have to do is pick up the door and pick up the stick to pop the door open. Since most of the floor is made of the carpenter wire, that allows most of the poop to fall straight through to the ground underneath, um, where you can easily shovel it out and use it as fertilizer. If you didn't want it falling straight on the ground, you could easily build uh, some kind of a chute to funnel it into a bin or a bucket if you wanted. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and I wish you good luck on your own projects. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.